Like and subscribe on the way in the door, my people. I hope you all are having a truly, truly fantastic day today on this Monday. Uh, as you all know, Monday is the time for uh, that I use to thank people who gave super thanks during the week and address some of the topics that come up in these super thanks. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. First of all, shout out to at 43 Vert and his wife for the continued support of the channel. And he comes through with the $10 super thanks. He says, thanks for all the videos. I am always amazed that my wife enjoys your videos because she has always had a dislike for basketball, which I have played for over 60 years. Have a good night and for tomorrow, another fantastic day. Uh, thank you. Like I said, thanks again so, so much for your continued support of the channel. I truly cannot thank you both enough. Shout out to you and your wife. Thank you so much. And next up, another longtime supporter of the channel with the $10 super thanks. Uh, shout out to at Wizman Ballin. 84.98. Now, this is actually something that I kind of addressed last week, uh, but because I couldn't find the original question, I, I may not have uh, fully addressed it. So I'm going to talk about it a little bit more again here. It says, uncommon question. Why do you and other content creators go at KD so hard about the Golden State move when LeBron started the trend to super team? In this modern era, and knows he has a lot on the NBA landscape, a la Silver Shoes. All he did was take a page from LeBron's weak book to greatness, and possibly interrupted his grasp grasp on being an all-time great. And KD has already said he knows MJ is the greatest of all time. Uh, Kobe very influential to his development. This is very weird to me. KD says MJ is the goat. Um, but content creators call KD LeBron 2.0 And LeBron doesn't respect any of the greats Come on, uh, you see Love you fam But something is missing in this argument If you read between the lines We never know what motivated KD Behind the scenes to make that move Probably beyond our pay grades uh, LOL Keep growing fam Uh yeah, uh, th uh, again, shout out to Ed Wizman Ballin, $84.98 for the $10 super thing. Like I said, I had kind of already addressed this last week, but but let me touch on this again a bit. Now, uh, he's basically saying, you know, KD just take took a page out of LeBron's book, and KD knows that MJ is the GOAT, and I feel like I have said both of these things at some point on the... Um, on a video somewhere, maybe several times. But here's the thing. I, I, I say two things. Just because KD knows that Michael Jordan is the GOAT and has obviously emulated a lot of Michael Jordan's game, a lot of Kobe Bryant's game, to me, that does not alleviate him of the responsibility to uh, do things the correct way. Nor does LeBron James making that move. I feel like... Uh, Again, had KD stuck it out for most of his career and did some ring chasing at the end like uh, most NBA players do, I feel like that is more respectable. But again, I feel like just because one person uh, <coughs> known as LeBron James decides to not be competitive, I feel like when you follow in that same step, you, you get the same treatment. And again, you know, I think it goes to, like I said, the mentality of Kevin Durant. Like, I feel like he does not have a leader mentality because, to be honest, you know, just like the 2011, <laughs> well, several LeBron's finals. <laughs> but, you know, you want to bring up 2011, I feel like it, it doesn't take a super team to beat LeBron James teams because just the fact that they're led by LeBron means that they are a mentally weak team. So I feel like if Kevin Durant was actually a leader, you know, if he actually chose to do it the right way, which would show what kind of character he has. Again, I feel like the, the fact that you can make that decision 
plays into your character. And just because someone uh, is a skilled basketball player doesn't make them a great leader. Just because someone believes Michael Jordan is the GOAT, to me, doesn't uh, give them any less blame if they decide to do some of the same things that LeBron James decides to do. Uh, matter of fact, I'll go as far as to say this. To me, it's a lot of players in the NBA who think Michael Jordan is the GOAT, but who make a lot of uncompetitive moves. So, yeah, this is, and then I would say the other thing, and this is also why I go hard at KD, because I feel like KD himself knows that it, it was a weak move, which is why he's so sensitive about it, which is why he's known to get in the comments with, you know, just regular fans trying to defend himself. I feel like because he knows. Again, you go back to the uh, photo. Like I said, go look at the photo of when he won that first championship with Golden State. And like I said, to me, he doesn't look excited. He doesn't look excited as, you know, the rest of the champions who won their first championship. And I, I, I will go, I'll go as far as to say this. I think KD, much more so than LeBron, knows that it was a weak move, knows that that particular action is a weak move. Because I'll say this, I think KD's conscience bothers him about it more than LeBron. LeBron is, <laughs> LeBron James is very much, uh, much more of a front runner than KD, you know, has ever been. In other words, I think LeBron James would actually rather you know, that's his character. He he would actually rather have the deck stacked in his favor. Like, he's just, he's not a real competitor. I mean, it just is what it is. I feel like he was ultra talented in high school. He was more talented than a lot of the players, and that worked for high school. So when, again, when he has that edge, then he's cool with that. But the moment he got into the NBA where he realized this is not going to be like high school, he was perfectly okay with stacking the deck in his favor to make it feel more like high school. <laughs> but uh, anyway, I think KD recognizes, I think inside KD recognizes much more so than LeBron James. I feel like KD has a conscience and it actually bothers him, which is why I think he's a lot more defensive about it than LeBron James. LeBron James just tries to convince everybody that, hey, what super teams? What what are you talking about? What what flopping? I I, I don't know what this is. <laughs> um, but anyway, like I said, to 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 me, I, I think they're equally weak moves just because I feel like if one person decides to do something unethical, uh the other person shouldn't just automatically follow. Especially if you're a competitor, you know. But anyway, shout out again to at Wizman Ballin 8498. Again, thank you so, so much for the $10 super thanks. And another longtime supporter at G the Great One with the $2 super thanks. He says, salute uncommon sense. Wade and Curry definitely have to take some responsibility for building super teams, but LeBron is in a class by himself. He is the GOAT super team creator. LeBron started and never stopped. He has no shame. Also, KD was going to the Warriors regardless of Curry going to the Hamptons to meet him in the offseason. KD has created two super teams after the Warriors. Curry hasn't recru recruited another superstar since KD left. For some strange reason, people act like Curry put a gun to KD and made him join the Warriors. KD was planning on jo joining the Warriors the whole time. I remember reading about it in an article from around wintertime in the 2015-2016 season. And that was coming from my uh, Steph Curry is guilty of making super teams. So is D-Wade. Yeah, and I, I, I pretty much agree. Uh, yeah, like I was saying, I just think Curry and D-Wade have to take some of that responsibility. Uh, and whether KD was going there or not, like I said, the, the fact that, you know, Curry self-admittedly, you know, wanted him to come, was conspiring with him to come, 
you know, like I said, I, I believe Curry has to take some of the responsibility. Again, D Wade admitting that Kobe Bryant was the catalyst behind uh, wanting to team up on a super team to beat one person. But uh, yeah, shout out again to at G the Great One for the two dollar super thanks. Thank, thank you so so much. Uh, next up, this comes from my uh, LeBron James LaSalt video. <laughs> uh, and this is a name uh, I don't think I've seen before. Uh, shout out to at Adidas20019 with the $5 super thanks. And he simply says thanks. And uh, thank you so much for supporting the channel. You are truly greatly appreciated. Th thank you so much for the $5 super thanks. And next up, uh, at Wizman Ballin' again, $84.98 with the $2 super thanks. He says, Uncommon, this is from the great Lou Rawls and a song he named Pure Imagination. <laughs> this goes out to all the LeBron fans, stands, and fanboys. And uh, I would sing this, but I, I actually can't remember how the melody goes. Some come with me and you'll see. Uh... Yeah, I'm not going to do it because I can't remember the melody. But so I'm going to just read the lyrics. <laughs> he says, uh, come with me and you'll be in a world of pure imagination. Take a look and you'll see into your imagination. You'll begin with the spin traveling in the world of my creation. <laughs> what we'll see will defy explanation. <laughs> per perfect choice for these fanboys. <laughs> Matter of fact, I'm, I'm going to go listen to that song. And I, I don't know. I, I may have to incorporate that into Fanboy Fridays somehow. <laughs> but anyway, shout out again to at Wizman Ballin. 84.98. Thanks so much for the $2 super thanks. And that was on the uh, LeBron James 21 Years of False Narratives video. Uh, next up at In The Groove 56 with the $5 super thanks. And this is coming from the same video. Says, at Uncommon Sense, having the most points is not considered being the best score. Longevity is not a stat either when you fail to win or lack that competitive gene to dominate in any of the individual accomplishments like Jordan did as a two-way player. MJ didn't have fanboys. He had NBA players and every ball player and analyst uh, marveling at the game he played with so much intensity. There was no need to create false narratives. The proof was in the pudding. Again, thanks for your continued eye-opening content. Shout out again to at In The Groove 56 with the $5 super thanks. Thank you so much for your continued support of the channel. All right, another familiar name. Shout out to at Snug Chamberlain 9986 with the $5 super thanks. He says, thanks. Great content as usual, and I'm here with three points. I'd like to get your insight on. So without further ado, here we go. He says, I think we can all agree that Wilt Chamberlain and Michael Jordan are two of the most athletic players we have ever seen thus far. So my question is, where would you rank Rodman on your athletic list? Just looking back at his old Pistons days, when he was young, the guy was all over the court. He is the first guy to date that I literally, that I know literally guarded one through five, especially in his early years and taking on the opposing team's best player on defense. I know we can't give him the ultimate credit because they were out there playing football, but this guy had effort and he had a motor. I just think when the athletic conversation is brought up, I feel Rodman doesn't get mentioned enough. What do you think? Uh, I'm actually glad that you brought this up because it's funny. Funny enough, just a few days ago, I was watching a, a Chicago game. Maybe it was even some kind of documentary on Chicago, but it was talking about Rodman. And I was actually thinking about this very thing that Rodman actually doesn't get bought up enough when we're talking about some of the greatest athletes to ever play basketball. I would have to put Rodman in my top five of when we're just talking about athletes, and I'm not sure exactly who my 
top five is. I would really have to think about it. But obviously, Jordan's in there. Wilt is in there. I would have to say Russell is in there as well. Uh, and Rodman is in there. Now, I have to think about who I would put there uh, fifth because it's, it's so many choices and so many kind of different directions you could go. I mean, I think, like, even if you're talking about somebody like a Spud Webb, you know, the, the fact that he was that short and jumping the way that he was. Uh, and, and a, you know, I'm, I'm a sidetrack for just a second. Just someone like Spud Webb. You know, when we talk about today's athletes uh, or today's players are more athletic, uh, again, we're, they're, they're acting like we've been through uh, <laughs> a thousand years of he- human evolution or something. And, you know, th- uh, these guys are taking more medicine and, and stuff that, that may give them an edge. But it's not like the human body has actually evolved in this shorter time, you know, in, in 30 years that we can say that these players are definitively more athletic when you have players like Wilt Chamberlain, Rodman, uh, Michael Jordan, uh, like I said, Bill Russell, you know, Sp- again, Spud Webb to me is probably somebody who doesn't get bought up enough uh, for his athleticism. Like I said, you know, Spud Webb was what, 5'2 or something? Uh, or maybe he was a little taller than that. I can't remember. Maybe Spud was about 5'6 or something like that. But regardless of that, you know, him jumping out the gym the way he did, you know, I feel like people forget about that. But anyway, back to Rodman. Yeah, like you said, you know, Rodman could definitely guard one through five. I would say Rodman guarded one through five much better than a LeBron James because even if you're talking about the times that Rodman has had to guard somebody like a Shaq. Now, obviously, no one is stopping Shaquille O'Neal. But what I will say is this. I think Rodman not only with his athleticism, but just with his smarts as a basketball player, with his smarts as a defender, with him knowing how to get into you mentally, I think Rodman guarded Shaq better than some other bigs. I will say that. Um, But, yeah, to me, Rodman definitely has to be top five uh, most athletic NBA players of all time. I, I think Rodman needs to be in that conversation, and I think he doesn't get bought up simply because Rodman was defense and rebounds. You know, I feel like unless you uh, have some offense to your game, a lot of players kind of get forgotten in a lot of conversations when, like I said, Rodman definitely, you you know, even thinking about how Michael Jordan talked about in the last dance that, you know, Rodman would be partying all night and then get, get up and run circles around everybody in the gym. You know, so, yeah, Rod- Rodman definitely has to be top five and just off the top of my head of some of the greatest athletes to ever play the game. And number two, he says, if Jordan had a young Rodman instead of Pippen and Grant, do you think Michael and the Bulls get to the finals sooner than 91? Do you think he gets over those hurdles a lot faster or do you think no matter what he had ultimately his career plays out the same. What do you think? Uh, another good question. Now, th- this is interesting because there are a lot of players who I think could have been swapped out for Pippen and gotten the same result. Like I said, you know, we talked about Tracy McGrady was supposed to go to the Bulls at one time. But I think what made Pippen work is that Pippen could take some of the offensive load off of Jordan, even though he was primarily a defender. But I guess here's the thing to think about is that, first of all, to me, you could say Rodman is a better defender than Scottie Pippen. Uh, Again, just in terms of versatility, just in terms of that literally was what Rodman did is defend and rebound. So I guess the question would be is if Rodman is on Chicago, who could step up to kind of take a little bit more of that offensive load and and be more of a threat? And, you know, I feel like somebody like a B.J. Armstrong, you know, remember they still had Paxson, which to me Paxson was still more of of a spot-up shooter, but somebody like B.J. Armstrong, I feel like 
if he had gotten a chance, he he probably could have been a little more of a threat on offense. He he had some decent handles and uh and and he had a good shot. So, you know, if someone like a BJ Armstrong could have stepped up and became a little more of a and you know, here's the thing is Scottie Pippen wasn't a great shooter. He he was athletic as well. But again, if you had Rodman kind of taking up and and ramping up the defense and here, and here's the thing that you do have to consider is I think Rodman was just naturally much more of an intense player than Scottie Pippen was. Again, Scottie Pippen had to be built into that. You know, I think Rodman was much more of a, he came there to do a job and he was going to do that job with all the intensity that you could ever want. It. So playing alongside Michael Jordan, Rodman was definitely going to be uh I feel like a bigger spark to the team than Scottie Pippen uh, ever was, you know, just in terms of providing that that energy uh, to the team. So, you know, that's something that actually could have worked out uh, for the benefit. Like I said, to me, it kind of just depends on if uh, the Bulls had another player that could have stepped up a little more offensively. And just off the top of my head, somebody like a B.J. Armstrong, I think, actually probably could have done that. Again, B.J. had some 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 handles. B.J. had some moves. And B.J. obviously had a better shot than Pippen. So if B.J. could have, you know, worked on his game, slashed into the rim a little bit more, uh, worked on creating his jump shot, which I believe he could. You know, if we remember... The, the famous game when B.J. had went to the Charlotte Hornets and they won that game, which is what they talked about on the last dance. Because, uh, you know, I think B.J. was still, again, living off that Michael Jordan, <laughs> living off of playing with Michael Jordan the previous year. And so B.J. still kind of had some of that energy and that same intensity. And I think he had something to prove playing against Michael Jordan. And they and they won that game. And obviously we know that that uh, pissed Michael Jordan off and that <laughs> the next time they played against the Hornets, uh, you know, he shut B.J. down. But, um, but yeah, B.J. Armstrong might have been someone who could have taken on some of that offensive responsibility. And if that was the case, then, yeah, maybe Rodman instead of Pippen may could have potentially played out for the better. Because, like I said, Rodman definitely – would have provided more spark, uh, more intensity for that Bulls team than a Scottie Pippen would have. Uh, but anyway, that, that's a great question. Uh, let me know what you guys think on that one in the comments. But anyway, let's get to his last question. He says, lastly, I saw a short interview with MJ and a reporter asked him about coaching and what does he think? Does he care to do so? And he replied by saying he has no patience and that the game he once played is totally different from today's game. He says he couldn't ask the kids today to do what he did and go through what he had to because in so many ways it would be unfair because he's expecting the players he coaches to have the same dog, the same fight, the same mentality. And when they don't produce that way of effort, then he loses patience. Why do you think that is? Why do you think it's unfair for players to go through what Mike went through as a player, according to MJ? So here's the thing about Michael Jordan. And, <laughs> you know, it's funny because, you know, we all get on here and we talk about how unbearable the NBA is. And uh, for us, you know, we're the consumers of a of a product or a, or a service or however you want to put it. We're we're the consumers of the NBA. So for us, I think it actually affects us more than Michael Jordan. And I say this because Michael Jordan has always says he tries to turn a negative into a positive. So I think Michael Jordan is more uh, accepting of the way things are. I think Michael Jordan just looks at it as, hey, you know, these kids, they just aren't the same kind of players. You know, he accepts the fact that, you know, these kids, again, a lot of the stuff that's happening in the NBA, Michael Jordan said was going to happen. You know, if you remember the interview on Oprah where he talked about, you know, you, you start off giving these kids these huge contracts and basically where well, they have nothing to prove after that. 
You know, you're giving them giving them the money before they've proved them anything. That's going to make them not work as hard. And, and this is what we're seeing. So, so I think Michael Jordan knew the NBA was headed here. I think Michael Jordan accepts the fact that the NBA is just a bunch of entitled brats. And he just accepts the fact that uh, I think maybe more so than thinking it's unfair to... Well, I think he thinks it's unfair in the sense that he knows he wouldn't accept it. Like, he knows he would not accept these kids not giving their best, and he would be extra hard on them. So he may think, like, the pressure that I would put on them would be unfair, uh, considering the fact that they're just not built like that. But, uh, you know, for us, the consumer, to me, it is only fair. <laughs> It is only fair that if you're making this kind of money that you should be putting in that same kind of work as Michael Jordan. And I will, but I will say this. You know, we we all have to uh, take into consideration that Michael Jordan is is one of one. That That is what makes him Michael Jordan. You know, the fact that he is more intense, you know, more competitive, uh, works harder, has the ability... Uh, had the accountability, you know, took on the responsibility. The fact that he did all those things is what makes him one of one. So everybody is not like Michael Jordan. But if we're just talking about in general, we all know that the NBA as a whole, again, we're dealing with a bunch of entitled brats. Uh, LeBron James is the face and the leader of the entitled brat era. And uh, so, yeah. You know, I, I think Michael Jordan just kind of accepts the fact that, hey, like, I, the, these kids, they wouldn't be able to tolerate what I would <laughs> be doing to them <laughs> if I couldn't get them to live up to the expectations that I would have. So I wouldn't even put myself in that position. So I, I think that's kind of probably what the point of view that MJ is, is coming from. Like I said, because MJ seems to be much more accepting of what the current state of the NBA is. And maybe that's because he knew it was headed there. Again, maybe that's because he had already said, you know, you start giving these kids these contracts before they've earned the thing, well, then they lose that desire to earn anything. They lose that desire to improve. And so maybe because he already saw this coming is why he can accept it much more than I think the fans who consume the product. And we are... You know, because we're the consumers of the product, we're looking at it like, hey, this is what we're paying you for. This is what we're supporting, you know, you for is to see your very best. So I think he's probably going to have a little different perspective than most of us. But anyway, shout out again to at Snug Chamberlain 9986 for the five dollar super thanks. Greatly appreciate it all. As always, thank you so, so much. And last but not least, shout out to at Goat Debate Media for the $10 super thanks. Uh, they just say good show. Check us out when you get a chance. And uh, thanks again so much for the $10 super thanks. I actually did have a chance to go and check out their channel. And, and it's a great debate channel. So, you know, y'all should go over there and check it out. Uh, it's at Great Debate Media. But anyway, we are going to wrap it up right here. Uh, let me know what you guys think in the comments about some of these topics. About uh, do you think people are too hard on KD? Uh, do you think Dennis Rodman should be talked about more for, for his athleticism? Uh let me know what you guys think. You all have a truly fantastic day, and I'll see you next time. All right.